Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. Just when we thought things were getting back to normal here in New York, COVID-19 has thrown us another curveball. The Delta variant of the virus has spread like wildfire in just the past few weeks. And according to the CDC, it's spreading the quickest in New York City, Long Island, and a few counties upstate. Just for context, the average positivity rate in New York was above 2% this week for the first time since May. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but we're talking about thousands of new cases every day. That being said, it's possible that the latest surge may not be as bad as what we've already seen. And that's because of the COVID-19 vaccine. All three of the vaccines available in the U.S. have been shown to protect people from the variant, or at least prevent life-threatening cases. But in order to be protected, someone has to be vaccinated. And while about 75% of New York adults have gotten the shot, that means more than 3 million people have not and could catch and spread the virus. So the state is now doubling down on the vaccine, setting new mandates for state workers and encouraging the private sector to get involved. Here's Governor Cuomo this week. You can admit vaccinated only people into your establishment. I can argue that it is a smart business practice because I want to go to a safe restaurant and I want to go to a safe theater uh, and I want to go to a safe bar. And uh, I think it's good business for the private sector. I also think it provides a real incentive for people to get the vaccine. But not everyone's happy with those new mandates. And we also got an update on the state's COVID-19 rental assistance program this week. Let's discuss that and more with Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio and our own Daryl Camp. Thank you both for being here. Sure. So we didn't get into too much detail of it before we just heard from the governor, but the governor is mandating that state workers either get the vaccine or get weekly COVID-19 testing. But, and that's become a problem with labor. Karen, what's going that's on? That's right, there? unless you work for a state-run hospital. And right. then you have to get the vaccine essentially or else, I guess, or you're, or you're fired or you can't come right. to work. So um, this is, you know, something that's that New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio did, the state of California is doing, it's becoming a trend. Um, what I wonder though, is people who still don't wanna get vaccinated and have to submit to the tests, that's gonna be cumbersome to implement. So like, does, does your supervisor have to check that every week? Like who is gonna follow up with that? So that seems a little bit messy, but I guess he feels like he can't completely mandate a vaccine at this point for a number of different reasons. First of all, we don't have a state of emergency anymore. The governor right. got rid of that in June and the FDA has not fully approved these vaccines. So legally you can't, you can't mandate it that everybody has to get it. And it brings up a lot of different questions about everything too. Like I don't totally understand what he can do right now and what he can't do. So he, the disaster emergency ended, as you said, mm -hmm. and he lost his some of his emergency powers before the, that ended in uh, in March or April, so I don't know like if he can issue a mask mandate now if if we go back to that or if he can just say the CDC says this and we're going to encourage it but I don't have the power. Yeah, I don't think he has the power for mask mandates. Legally, you can only you, the employer can make these rules, but you can't do them from other people from the state of emergency. Maybe, maybe he got rid of that too easily, even though he was like under such pressure, especially from Republicans to like, you can't control the state this way anymore in retrospect now, you know, maybe he should have hung on to it, right? <laughs> can't win, can't I, win in this situation. So something that he <laughs> does have is money. He has $15 million that he announced this week that is going to go to vaccine acceptance. Darrell, what is this going to? What is the money actually going to be going towards to boost the vaccination rates? There are basically a group of nonprofits, particularly in the New York City area, that will be reaching out directly to individuals and communities who have not accepted the vaccine, statistically speaking, and saying, hey, let's get educated about this. Here's what it's about. It seems like at this point, though, anything post January that the governor has done has at least partially been a function of politi political expediency. Mm -hmm. So when you have the attorney general about to have another report at some point in the next few months or potentially weeks, you have to look at, okay, is he attempting to turn dirt into rose petals here by some sort of political alchemy? So we have to sort of read too deeply into anything he does at this point. And the money was already in the budget. So it's a question of where in the budget was it and what exactly will the money be used for over time? Yeah. Do right. he need that announcement right now in, 
<clears throat> held down to the money for three or four months. No, <clears throat> right. we didn't need <clears throat> to do that now. So it's the timing right. is curious. Yeah. And we also had this week something interesting. Speaking of the governor, he's obviously under a lot of different investigations. Mm -hmm. One of them dealing with sexual harassment, both investigated mm -hmm. by the AG and the assembly. Mm -hmm. And we heard something this week. The attorney that handled one of the cases, uh, Charlotte Bennett, when she reported the alleged sexual harassment to the administration, she resigned this week. Karen, what happened yes, there? Yes, that's right. That's one of Cuomo's top lawyers um, resigned. The New York Times reported that. We're wondering if that's some kind of tea leaves reading that maybe she is going to be one of the fall people because she didn't apparently go through the correct procedures when Charlotte Bennett reported what was happening with the governor. She said, well, she allegedly said, well, he was just grooming you for sex, but he didn't sexually harass you. So you don't really have a case, <laughs> which, you know, to anybody's ears does not sound very good at all so no. that's an l morally still yeah mm -hmm. i i mm -hmm. that does not sound great I, yeah. I was and and you wonder if that they you know she's seeing that she's going to be you know ripped apart in this upcoming report based on she's been questioned by the attorney general the governor has now been questioned and you know maybe this is time for her to leave so when it comes out they can say oh well she doesn't work here anymore well, we are seeing, uh, as we talked about on last week's show, a shift in strategy from the governor, where as at the start of these investigations, when he was being accused of sexual harassment, he had this very teary response. He said, I'm embarrassed. I apologize if I made anybody uncomfortable. I'm going to change my ways. But he was very careful to say, I did not touch anybody inappropriately. Mm -hmm. Daryl, what do you make of this change in tone in how he's responding to this? That is the political alchemy I was referring to a couple of minutes ago because it's worked. You have people who said he lost the public trust, people like Zelnor Myrie, who said, hey, we can't trust you and we need a different leadership strategy. And he's appearing with him at events. You had uh, Jamal Democrats. Bailey. You have a ton of people, <clears throat> Andrea Stewart Cousins, who could have their own events, but they haven't. So it's been practical on some level. Additionally, last week, Carl Hasty has been getting dragged for about seven days now for what I thought was a moderate response. I understand why some people would be upset by saying, hey, we don't know if it will be actionable if the AG finds some wrongdoing. Mm. But at the same time, it's, it's not, he's not wrong necessarily, but I understand the emotional response people have. Well, right, yeah, there, right. there's also a situation where what if the AG's report comes out and the report says exactly what the governor thinks it's going to say. In, in, well, what he publicly mm -hmm. thinks it's going to say. Well, he says it's going to say that. He knows in advance, apparently. That's yeah. what he's been saying lately. People are going to be shocked, he said this week, I mean, when they I see like, you know, how innocent shocked. he is. <laughs> yeah. right? He's also impugning the motives of one of the investigators, um, you know, saying that because this investigator, June Kim, used to work for Preet Bharara, former U.S. attorney, who prosecuted, successfully prosecuted Cuomo's former top aide, Joe Prococo, who's in prison. I know that's convoluted, but according to Cuomo, Preet Bharara actually now wants to be governor, and he's going to somehow control his former deputy, June Kim, who's investigating this. And, you know, June Kim will do a bad report on Cuomo with no basis at all, so that Preet Bharara can be governor. And everyone's, that seems to be the governor's defense. Everyone's right? motivations are political except for his. Yeah. That's what yeah. I learned this and week. And the attorney general, mm -hmm. Tish James, he's been saying that with no evidence that she wants to run A for governor. A former ally, by the way. Right. And yeah. he said that the state controller, Tom DiNapoli, also with no evidence, wants to run for governor. So that's the motivation of everyone who's against him. They'll just stop at nothing An to become primary. governor. Yeah. Right? And then, but you know, so that resonates with people, too. Yeah, so I guess, absolutely. you know, he's thinking the strategy is going to win because the public knows me more than they know these other people. Right. Well, we didn't get to it. I wanted to talk about the rental assistance debacle. You can see that on oh our website goodness, at yeah. nynow.org. We have the full story there. Got to leave it there. Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio, our own Daryl Camp. Thank you both so much. Sure.